My Olympic experience. So for me, it was still quite magical um, and quite, well, just a very different experience. And I've got nothing to compare it to because obviously it wasn't like a normal games. Um, so I, yeah, I, but then I don't know any different because I've never been to a normal games. So it was still quite special and um, yeah, just being able to be part of something much bigger than just triathlon because you're part of Team GB, so you're part of a whole team and you want to do well for the team, not just for yourself. So, you know, it was, it was still, it, it was intense um, and it was very nerve wracking and it was hard, but it was still, yeah, it was just, it was quite magical, I'd say. Um, and especially the fact that I did well and I came away and achieve what I wanted to achieve. I think that was that was quite special for me. Yeah, so um, at the minute we're, I took a bit of downtime after the games, doing what I wanted and, and now training, training started to ramp up a little bit again and then I'm into a Super League block which is four weekends of um, very short, fast, intense racing. Um, so yeah, we've gone from London to Munich, we've got Jersey, Malibu. So I'll do the Super League races and then hoping that I'll manage to get a bit of fitness throughout that month. And then I'll have three weeks to prepare for Bermuda, which is the World Sprint Champs in Bermuda. And then we've also got the World Relay Champs as well, which is the day after the individual race in Bermuda. You're too lazy and he doesn't like early mornings at all. He likes just chilling out. You're very lazy, aren't you, Al? <laughs> this is from the Triathlon Women's Individual Competition. Um, so yeah, this was the individual race on that we did on the Tuesday. Um, and yeah, so this is the, the silver medal from that. Um, but yeah, it's quite cool. I think they only started engraving them in Rio before then. Uh, I don't think they engrave them, so it's quite cool. But it does annoy me that everything is has a capital except the competition. It's just a small C, and that really annoys me. I'm like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. Um, and then this one was from the Mixed Team Relay, um, which is girl, boy, girl, boy. And we each do a, a small triathlon. Um, and yeah, so we won that one. So that was that was the Tuesday and then the relay was on the Saturday morning. Um, and that's the first triathlon mixed team relay in the Olympic Games. So yeah, we're the first, first medalist for it. So that's quite, that's quite cool. And they're made from recycled phones. I don't know what these are as well that have come. Oh, they're cool, aren't they? We're in London. Don't know what, the marathon's in October, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, these are the shoes that I raced in for the games. Um, so yeah, I guess they have good memories. And my friend got me these little, um, I don't know what you call them, shoelace tags, I guess. Uh, so that's GTV Tokyo 2021. And then hammer down is the, is the saying that she always, she always says to me for the race. We've been saying that for a few years now, her and my dad. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it was nice to, I don't know, just, I opened, them off her when I got to Tokyo and I guess it made me cry a little bit and it's just quite a nice special thing to have before the uh, before the games and even when I'm in transition just looking down at them uh, and knowing that they're all there with me so it's quite cute. <laughs> so 11 weeks out from the games I started to get a bit of hip pain and just in my leg and stuff and it just didn't feel right and they didn't diagnose it at first because I got an MRI and I was getting pain in my actual hip, so they just cut it off, literally just above where I had my stress response. So they just cut that off and that was a week before I got a second scan. So 
I didn't run for that in between the two scans though anyway because I was in too much pain. Um, so we already sort of started the healing process but yeah, got that 11 weeks out um, and then that was just a shock because you kind of know when you might be about to get an injury um, and especially something like bone because things change like your, your food pattern, you might start to cut out different foods and you might have lost weight or you've lost your period and things like that but for me literally nothing had changed so it was I don't it was just quite it was a shock like I didn't expect it at all Every, I'd not had a bone injury in quite a long time um, and I felt like we've worked hard in the gym to avoid things like that and all my rehab and prehab stuff so yeah when the physio came over and told me I knew it was bad news because the physio that was dealing with it lives just up the road and I had the scan that morning I think and then I was just in the kitchen and I was just washing up the pots and I saw her at the gate and I instantly my heart sank because I was like she wouldn't be here if it was good news I, I, I already knew so I already started like getting a bit hot and like I was like oh god it's gonna be bad news isn't it and then she came and she was like should we just have a sit down and, and she's like is Josh here? And I was like, yeah, I know what you're gonna say. And then, yeah, she was like, so you've got a little stress response. And, and then instantly, as soon as you, you say bone, like you're like, okay, that's six weeks of not running, that's six weeks of not training. And I can't afford to do that right now. I've got 11 weeks till the games. So that was the case. I had to do six weeks of, of no running. The first two weeks, she was like, I'm gonna have to put you on crutches. I was like, but why? So then the first two weeks were hard because I didn't want to accept it and I also didn't want other people to see me so I, I could still train a bit, I could still swim and just put my pole boy in but I didn't want to go to swimming because I didn't, I didn't want people to know that I was injured and if they did know I was injured I didn't want them asking questions because I was like if you ask me about this now I will just cry so I ended up going to an endless pool um, for the first sort of 10 days just to be on my own and just be able to exercise um, and stay sane, at least. Yeah, it's, it's very messy, don't judge. <laughs> it's actually not my fault. Dad decided he was going to have a clear out and bring all of his tools here. Um, so, here is the electric It looks better in, like, actual daylight, but we don't have any today. Um, but it's the speed of light. And then there is actually quite a cool thing underneath that I only just noticed. So it says, the moment light leaves, darkness returns. Which is quite, I don't know. I don't know what, what that really means, but it's quite cool. Um, but yeah, those are my, and then there are my wheels that will go, that go on it. But I've just been, I've been training on it, which is naughty. <laughs> I'd say things haven't really changed to be honest. I think people ask you that expecting that your whole world to change like, no, I still go to the supermarkets, I still just walk in Alfie. And I mean, it's nice because you, so, especially in the little village that I live in, you get recognized by people because everyone knew about it. And because my physio is from here as well, she sort of posted on the, the village group that, oh, George has done this and then everyone gets behind you. And it's quite nice you go out for a walk and people be like, oh, well done for the Olympics. I'm like, oh, thank you. And just people that watch sport and watch the games that aren't interested in sport and found out what triathlon is all about and they're like oh my god it's crazy the triathlon and I watched it all and I think the timing of it was quite good for people because it was late at night when people were sort of starting to wind down and watch a bit of tv and then the triathlon was on so it was quite a good time for people back in the UK to watch it but yeah I don't think anything's changed to be honest and I kind of I'm kind of glad I like it that way and it's been nice to have a sort of four week period after the games where I've just done bits and bobs and invited to things and do whatever I want to do and, and chill out a bit but still train but just do the training that I want to do and then being able to have races to focus on again um, so it's not too long of a year after the games and because I think if you if you switch off too much after the games I think you can probably get quite down um, because like a lot of people say so many people athletes go to games and you, if you do well or you don't do well, you expect your life to change and it, it just doesn't. And so when it doesn't and everything's the same, you just, I think you're like, oh, 
right, it, that's it now, it's it's over, what what do I do now? Like you're just a bit lost. Um, but yeah, it's it's been the same and I'm, I'm kind of glad and I've, I've kept busy and got a nice little team around me. For race day, I, so be, well, because it was supposed to be warm for the individual, we were going to have um, like slushies. So in my slushy, before my warm up, I was having a, a carb slushy. And then after my warm up, just before the race, I would have a slushy gel. Um, but because it obviously was quite cold in the end for the race, we didn't have the slushies. So basically I just sipped on a 7.50 carb drink throughout the morning. So basically from waking up, having my breakfast and stuff, because race morning I'm always a bit feels sick anyway. So just as long as I can get through that carb drink in the before the race, then I know I'll be fine. And then when we were down at race, I, I had um, another carb drink that I was still just sipping on throughout the, the whole period that I was down there and like around warm up and stuff. And then before the race, they just had a, a normal um, a normal gel um, instead of the slushy gel because we don't feel like we needed it. Um, and then in the race, I had a 7.50 carb drink on my bike. And then I had two gels on my bike that I take at 10k and 30k on the bike and then on the run it actually got quite warm by the time we were on the run so I just had run pouches which I wanted frozen so mine were completely frozen and I just held them just to make me feel cool. The next big aim is uh, Commonwealth Games. So yeah, luckily I, I pr have been pre-selected um, as long as I sort of hit all the, the things that are asked of me into next year. And then around next year as well, we start collecting Olympic points. So for the next sort of two years, I need to be quite consistent again and rack up my Olympic points because then that helps towards your ranking into the Olympic Games and the higher ranked, the better because you get a better swim start. Um, so yeah, I think commies is the next aim and then it'll be looking to, to focus on getting qualified for, for Paris. Um, but yeah, I feel like that'll be a tough one because there's a lot of younger, very fast and um, yeah, they're, they're all coming through now. So that'll be hard. I think there'll be even more of us around for Paris. So that'll be tough, but I'm focused on it and I've got a silver medal in the individual and I really want a gold medal. So I think, I don't know, as an athlete, you always think you can do better and you always, there's always something to work on. I think even winning gold in the relay, there's things that I think I can still work on. Like I could definitely have had a better bike leg and things like that. So yeah, you always, you always want more. I get a medal and I just woke up like this.